So we'll call for the last victim. So Dr. Ahmed Samah, safety and effectiveness of simultaneous elective endovascular repair of multiple level aortic disease. Oh, that's very challenging. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I am Ahmed Samah Al Ashra from Mansoura University. I will talk about safety and effectiveness uh, of simultaneous EVR and TVR for multiple level aortic disease. Uh, there, uh, there are uh, 10 to 20 percent of patients with abdominal aortic aneurysm uh, have concomitant thoracic aortic pathology, type B dissection, penetrating aortic ulcer, thoracic uh, aortic aneurysm, abdominal aneurysm also uh, are presented in uh, 10 percent to 29 uh, percent of patients with thoracic aortic aneurysm. In this case series, we uh, aim to define our single center experience in elective uh, simultaneous of endovascular therapy uh, for coexisting thoracic and abdominal aortic pathology as regard safety and efficacy. Our uh, case series was a retrospective single center uh, study five years uh, done at Gangnam Severance uh, Hospital. Uh, we reviewed uh, our endovascular aortic surgery uh, out of uh, uh, 332 patients whose aortic pathology managed by TVR. We had uh, eight patients uh, whom underwent uh, concomitant TVR with TVR for infrarenal aortic aneurysm. All these patients admitted under elective situation. Uh, for planning of proximal landing zone, uh, we follow standard EVR and TVR. We depending on Ishimaru classification and define our technical success uh, by accurate landing of both uh, endovascular, uh, endo sorry, both endograft with exclusion of disease and the revascularization of target vessel without endoleak. This is our uh, case uh, for zone uh, zero. In this uh, case, we have uh, two pathology. Thoracic, uh, pathology, thoracic aortic pathology, uh, aortic arch aneurysm, and infrarenal aortic aneurysm, and also uh, common iliac uh, aneurysm and internal iliac aneurysm. We uh, open uh, brachiocephalic through uh, chimney and open uh, left common carotid and left subclavian through hybrid bypass from right common carotid and embolize the internal iliac and then open uh, infrarenal abdominal uh, endograft. And this 3D reconstruction follow up after one month. For more detail about zone uh, zero chimney hybrid uh, and the hybrid uh, debranching, we depend on single aortic arch chimney to avoid gutter area in high risk uh, group of patient. Uh, so we start with uh, hybrid debranching to lift the common carotid and lift subclavian uh, from right common carotid. After that, we uh, access brachiocephalic and uh, ascending aortic arch from femoral axis. Uh, after that, we open uh, endograft and the chimney, you can see and follow up the relation between chimney graft and the endograft. There is no endoleak in different section. You also can see this case, the same case for zone zero aortic arch chimney. This is preoperative CT. You can see aortic arch chimney, and this is uh, the angiogram. You can see after deployment of endograft. And this is final angiogram. Sorry. There is some technical issue here. This is post operative uh, CT, no endoleak. This is another case of our clinical practice for zone uh, 4 TVR and EVR. You can uh, see here. Uh, at zone four, uh, penetrating aortic ulcer and infrarenal abdominal aortic aneurysm that managed through a standard TVR and EVR. This table uh, shows patient characteristic and demographic data. You can see old age and many comorbidities, mostly males, and two cases with uh, operative aortic uh, uh, history. And four zones, we have four patients in zone zero, two patients in zone two, and two patients in zone four. This table summarizes operative procedure and outcome. For zone uh, zero, 
thoracic uh, lesion was uh, aortic uh, was arch aneurysm in two cases and coronary dissection in two uh, cases. For zone two, penetrating aortic ulcer and arch aneurysm. For zone four, penetrating aortic, uh, penetrating aortic ulcer and uh, coronary dissection. For abdominal lesion, uh, all uh, of them uh, were abdominal aortic aneurysm except one case with pure iliac aneurysm. And the three of them has uh, internal iliac uh, artery aneurysm that matches through embolization. For uh, the branching of supra aortic uh, blood vessels, in zone zero, we depend on total debranching in two cases, and in other uh, two cases uh, with uh, high risk, we depend on right internal iliac artery a chimney and hybrid debranching uh, from right common carotid to left common carotid and left subclavian. In zone two, we debranch left subclavian artery through single bypass from left to common carotid artery. We use a commercial device. Let us talk about the complication. We have one mortality case, this uh, case, due to uh, multi-organ failure that started with respiratory failure, intubation, then stroke, and this after uh, 255 days from the first admission. This is another complication of contained eruption. I will talk in detail about it. We have uh, one case of uh, type 2 endoleak that managed conservatively, and one case of type, uh, type 1 A endoleak that uh, managed through extension of endograft. Also, we have a collapse of true lumen interoperative in this case that manages through luminix uh, device, bare metal stent. And two cases of stroke, one uh, presented with delirium and managed conservatively and buzzed. And unfortunately, one case of stroke with permanent deficit. This is a case of contained rupture. Uh, after one month, CTA showed the type 1A endoleak, but during uh, angiogram, we found it contained rupture that sealed through extension of another uh, endograft, Xenix TX2 before. Let us talk about uh, two uh, points for discussion. The advantage and disadvantage of simultaneous TVR and TVR. Advantage uh, include concomitant endovascular repair may prevent future morbidity and the mortality that might be associated with two separate uh, operations. And also the approach for both uh, procedure is the same, to either transfemoral or conduit. And the procedure can often be completed in the same uh, setting without much additional technical complexity. But uh, this advantage may increase the procedure time, contrast and radiation exposure, a segment of aortic coverage that increase morbidity like a stroke, spinal cord ischemia, renal failure, and reintervention. The most important issue is spinal cord ischemia because in this uh, uh, sector of patient, we cover large area of uh, aorta. And in uh, our case series, we had a lot of risk factors for developing spinal cord ischemia. Our patient seven men, old age, history of coronary renal failure in one case, graft replacement, of ascending aorta into patient embolization of internal iliac in three patient and the mean thoracic aortic coverage 189 millimeter, but no spinal cord ischemia developed in our series. While in literature it uh, was around 13, we uh, recommend that for our protocol for spinal cord ischemia, as we start with CSF drainage when descending thoracic aorta will be covered and maintaining a high spinal reflux pressure and the collateral arterial flow in all patients uh, through maintaining a higher blood pressure during the perioperative period until the absence of spinal cord ischemia was confirmed. Also, we debranched left subclavian in both zone zero and zone two routinely. We can conclude from this case series that simultaneous TVR and DVR appear to be feasible and safe technique with few morbidity and mortality. Also, spinal cord ischemia can be avoided through our protocol for CSF drainage, the branching of left subclavian artery, and the primitive preoperative hypertension. Thank you all.